Okay, so this is WebOS 2.9 on the Raspberry Pi 4. And uh, as you can see, I've got dual screen support. Uh, I've got 1080 video playing in the background there. And on the front, I've got the YouTube app, uh, which is showing my channel. Uh, and if I drag down from the bottom, you can see that touchscreen works as well. So I've got volume control, uh, although a bit, a bit slow and sketchy. It doesn't like playing video while doing other things at the same time. It certainly likes to do one thing at a time. Uh, and if I tap, Let's try tapping, there you go. So you can see the apps. Uh, if, you're, if you have an LG TV, you'll be familiar with this format. But as you can see, it's a bit sluggish be because it's playing a 1080 video in the background. Let's just put the camera on a tripod and I'll show you a bit more about the OS. Okay, so now that the video is paused in the background, the touchscreen is much more responsive uh, and things like calling up the menu, uh, going to settings, things like that are much, much quicker than they were. But also, there's mouse control, so if I move the mouse around uh, on the top screen, if I move it to the left, you can see that it appears on the smaller touchscreen device. So if I just tap that, uh, and if I do things like drag up from the bottom, and then I go to the other screen and drag up from the bottom, you can see that all the menus work, uh, and they work independently. And this is something that wasn't available before. Ah, so now I've lost the mouse pointer. This is another little tip. I oh, know it's there now. If you lose the mouse pointer, go to the top of the screen. There seems to be a part of the screen that the mouse pointer always reappears in uh, when it's in dual screen. So if it, if it ever loses the mouse pointer, it can be got back. Right, let's switch over to screen capture and I'll show you a bit more about the operating system. So what made WebOS good at the time was the really good YouTube performance. So 108060 YouTube was something that you just couldn't do on the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, other operating systems have done it now, but it's still not necessarily perfect. A year ago, WebOS had it and it was lovely and smooth and it was a nice fast operating system. It is little more than a web browser in what you can do with it at the moment, although people can write apps for it and you can use it for Internet of Things as well. Uh, but if I click on this WebOS 2.4, video that I did. Uh, I put a link in the description of that uh, which allows you to download a pre-built image because if you go to the WebOS open source page uh, it wants you to build the image. Luckily this link still works so if I click on this so link to, uh, no download link rather, go so if I click on that this takes you to this page where you can download it for various different hardware so Raspberry Pi 4 is the one we want so if you click on this one, this is the latest version that came out 22nd of January. And you can use Raspberry Pi Imager to write the downloaded image onto, in my case, an SD card. There's an official website, uh, WebOS OSE, and uh, all the information is here about the various different updates. So if we click into it, you can see it says Raspberry Pi 4 support. And uh, also you can see what happened in the different versions. So if you want to watch my older videos, you can. Let's go from 2.6 to see what was changed in 2.6. So you can add shortcuts to the home launcher now. Added the feature to show a badge on a bookmark. Release command line interface. And this is about the dual display modified to make it run a launcher on the primary display HDMI 0 and a bear app on the secondary display HDMI 1. So that was what I was doing before. Implemented the web media and video decoder. Now I, I couldn't get anything to run. I've got a USB stick plugged in, in there at the moment, but I can't get it to run anything because I thought it might be something that may be able to play 4K content from a USB stick. But uh, yeah, I haven't been able to do that. Uh, so 2.7, so a few little fixes there. Released Bean Visor 2.0.3. Allowed simultaneous mirroring between displays. Added support for multiple display clusters. So media enabled hardware acceleration in the Raspberry Pi 4. That should improve performance. So let's try 2.8. Updated to check whether Display 2 is connected or disconnected when running on the emulator to get the launcher and the bear app in the secondary display. So in 2.9, the thing that stood out for me was uh, the web browser. And it says here, upgraded Chromium to version 84. So it is actually running on Chromium, this web browser. So let's have a look at the interface, which hasn't changed too much uh, since my previous videos. Uh, so we've got Bear App, which pretty much takes you back to a desktop. So IoTivity Sampler, uh, so Internet of Things, and there's various different things on here, which I haven't really had a look at yet. Um, but uh, I also probably don't think it's my sort of thing. So if you want to know more information about that, their website does seem to have loads of information, loads of links and links to GitHubs and so on. Web browser we've shown, but I'll go back to that in a minute. Media Viewer. I couldn't get it to do anything. Uh, I was hoping I'd plug in my USB stick. In fact, if I unplug my USB stick, 
you can see it's disconnected. If I plug it in again, uh, on an LG TV it comes up with a little uh, like a file management. You can click on it and you can play files and things like that. This doesn't seem to do any of that. So enact an app development framework built atop React that's easy to use, performant and customizable. Not really my sort of thing, but if it is your thing, you might find this interesting that, and going through the various different options that you can use with that. That's the main web page with loads of information. Test WebRTC, again, not my sort of thing. Very little on the settings, much less than you get on a TV. So just general, and I've done the location and also network. So it's got Wi-Fi, it's got Ethernet. So where this would be great is if they allowed you to either sideload apps, uh, which you may be able to do, but I think it's probably down the development route rather than that. Um, but also, I, I've always thought this would be a really good media center to have on the Pi because the performance is good, but also LG TVs have pretty much all of the standard TV streaming apps, so things like Netflix and Amazon Prime and all, depending on what country you're in, they tend to support most of the apps that are available in that country. But maybe that's not the intention of this at all but it would be nice to see it implemented so let's go back to the main page this one here and you can see there is so much information so if you're into programming uh, and internet of things and things like that then have a look through and see if it works for you if you find out any different keyboard shortcuts then i'd be interested just to see uh, what there is but i've gone through various different things in the guide so see google assistant is on here as well um, so that would be interesting to see that up and running. Tutorials. It's a well done website and uh, obviously it gets regular updates so you know maybe this will be something to watch on the Pi in the future. Uh, but for now it's uh, for me it would be just something that I would use as a video player or if I wanted to give someone uh, a web browser that they weren't going to get into trouble with then I suppose this is an option because there's not an awful lot you can do wrong on this. So let's have a look at the browser again. So let's go for YouTube, Lee, PSP Video HDR. And you can see it comes up nice and fast on an SD card on a standard Pi 4. It's an 8 gig Pi, not that's going to make any difference, but uh, not overclocked or anything. So this is 1080 video, uh, we can go full screen and I can do stats for nerds which I think is probably here. Yeah, stats for nerds. So zero frames dropped of 929. Yeah, so it doesn't seem to be dropping frames. So the video performance is still really good which is nice to see. So if we're going to uh, the top bit here like a sort of menu system and go into history. There is no history, I know there is. Uh, and things that I've been playing on here, uh, I had iPlayer going on here before. Oh, in fact, let's just search for it because there's loads of history there. So I can type it in this top bar, as you would expect. And if I was to just play a bit of this just to, just to show it. And you can see that the interface shows up as it would on a web browser. Oh, we'll let it play a bit of the advert, just to show that it's working fine. I've muted it, but you can see that it's working fine. So Prime Video doesn't seem to want to play. It gets you this far, uh, and I did get one step further on, but it doesn't seem to get you to be able to play any content. So that's WebOS 2.9. Let me know if you get anything to work on it, uh, if there's any apps that you find, or anything you can sideload, or anything like that. But uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.